Hey, it's Sam, the developer of Blood and Iron, the Unreal Engine Grand Strategy game. In this devlog, I'll cover improvements to water, menus, progress on the asset pack, compiling into an executable, and two new continents, South America and Antarctica. Let's start with Antarctica. Some of you have asked why I chose to use a globe instead of a flat map. There are several reasons. Rendering scale, and the fact that players have a new, albeit empty, continent to explore. Antarctica's provinces reflect current claims, and will largely be uninhabited during the game's timeframe. Countries interested in exploring Antarctica will receive events related to claiming areas and racing to the South Pole, with systems based on modifiers that grant research bonuses and prestige. I might add small provinces representing semi-permanent bases, but that doesn't fit well within the game's timeline. Water ending is notoriously demanding on performance. Reflections and translucency contribute to this, so many games use tricks to fake water. In Blood and Iron, I employ a lightweight fake water shader that simulates depth and reflections. I created a bathymetry texture to interpolate between shallow and deep colors, editing the levels to fit my style. I then use parallax mapping while masking land pixels for better performance. The normals are derived from three textures moving in different directions, which I feed into a Fresnel node for enhanced highlights. I rely on the base sky atmosphere reflections, but skip lumen and screen space reflections due to camera angles. The result is significantly better than the previous water system. If you want to see more or have any questions, comment and subscribe. Now to South America, which faced an interesting historical period. After gaining independence, there were numerous attempts to unify the regions of Latin America, which raises fascinating what-if scenarios for the game. I divided Spanish-speaking cultures into three, North Andean, South Andean, and Platinian. This approach, common in many Victoria 2 mods, reflect geographic cultures before national identities solidified, which will be modelled through event chains. There are many native cultures represented, including five unique Patagonian and Amazonian cultures. Notably, the Quechua and Aymara in Peru and Bolivia are predominantly and overwhelmingly Catholic, outnumbering the European-descended South Andean population. Now let's appreciate the topography. The Andes look incredible, becoming my favourite visual aspect of the game over Ethiopia. Brazil, surprisingly, is very hilly and mountainous, and features massive plateaus and diverse climates, from savannas in the northeast to the jungles in the Amazon, affecting demographics, especially with Afro-Brazilians concentrated in fertile areas in the northeast. It's difficult to find good borders, so a lot are based off modern boundaries, though some minor boundaries are missing as there was an uncountable number of conflicts over useless territory at this time. I'm also working on an engine plugin that will enable others to create games like mine. It's about halfway done, but with the Unreal Engine marketplace moving to fab, it might take a bit longer. However, this means I can add more features before it's released. Subscribe for more updates. Also, if any Unreal Engine programmers know how to use the Parallel 4 function, please let me know. I'm having trouble to get it to work and I'm 99% sure it's broken. I'm aiming to ship a demo version of the game, featuring just the map to explore, coinciding with the asset pack release. I've been working on basic features like the main menu and loading screens. Creating loading screens in Unreal Engine can be tricky. Most tutorials focus on blueprints, which often lead to freezing the game instead of providing a true loading experience. In C++ it's relatively simple. I just render a widget on the media rendering thread, displaying a historical painting and a quote that are randomly selected. I'll include the functionality in the marketplace asset since it is a hassle to do without C++ knowledge. The main menu features particle effects from my engine plugin and stylized ornamental buttons. I think it looks good, though I plan to replace it with designs from a 2D artist at some point. I can now compile the game into a full EXE without bugs, which is great as I can release a demo whenever I'm ready. That's it for this devlog, thanks for watching, it truly does mean the most, and have a great day.